Okay, what's going on everyone? Yeah, CRTK back in full effect with some gaming videos. Uh, sorry, it's been a little while, was out of the country, but um, yeah, today I thought I would show you uh, several pickups that I have uh, acquired. It occurred to me that I had yet to do so, and uh, these are pickups from, uh, it's like I've got backlog pickups. I'm getting stuff in so frequently every week, every other week. So, yeah, this is a bunch of stuff that I picked up back, um, what, very early February that uh, didn't get around to uh, showing you. So, I'm uh, going to do that today. Yeah, first of all, we'll get to these right here. And, uh, wow, absolutely, uh, what can I say, lovely cover art, as is uh, typically always the case for the Japanese Mega Drive games. They never seem to disappoint you in that regard do they just look at that uh, absolute works of art buttes and um yeah first of all here we have uh wow an all-time classic uh favorite of mine um this one is uh well in the west known as uh fire shark you can see the kanji same 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 shark 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 as uh, it was uh, referred to originally in japan where it was released same 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 and uh, oh yeah, I should mention actually real quickly, and what I'll, uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to show you this here. Um, being that, uh, well, this is a US Genesis, obviously, and I'm running a Mega Drive card on it uh, via a Game Genie, just a way to make the cartridge fit in there. Other um, and um, kind of like the uh, Neo Geo, with many of the Mega Drive games, uh, whatever the region, the system you're playing them on, that's kind of the region that they'll boot up in. So, for instance, even though this is Same Same Same, a Japanese Mega Drive cart, uh, when you have it connected via a Game Genie, or if you remove the tabs and have it directly um, inserted into a U.S. or European uh, Mega Drive, a U.S. Genesis, it's going to boot up into whatever region the console is. So it will display as Fire Shark, and you'll have the ugly DreamWorks logo. Uh, so very much like the Neo Geo, you know, whatever the region of the system, regardless of uh, the game, uh, the game's region, that's what it's going to boot up in. So, um, and I've already done it here, as you can see. Uh, so if you do have one of these Game Genies, it's the only way to really access the uh, Japanese Mega Drive region data for the game on a US or European Genesis. And the code you want to enter in upon startup is, as you can see right here, M-J-G-T-A-R-8-N and uh, upon doing that we're just gonna go down to and here's the uh, here's an awesome Capcom fight stick for the uh, Genesis Mega Drive just wanna mash start and uh, it's gonna boot up as Same 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 which is awesome now if you were to omit entering in that code I'll show you it real quickly you'll kinda get the ugly DreamWorks you won't have the nice Toaplan logo at the bottom uh, it's just going to say, um, you know, Fire Shark, <laughs> DreamWorks, and then you get the kind of small Toaplan logo, you know? So, uh, not really quite as good, so just a little uh, trick tip for you if you've got a Game Genie to play it in the correct region. Uh, I say correct region, just uh, the original region, and it looks better as Same 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 with that uh, beautiful Toa Plan logo at the bottom, uh, I must admit. So there you go, with the uh, code uh, kind of uh, entered back into it, you can see that beautiful Toa Plan logo and you get the kanji up at the top, the original, uh, Same Same Same, Shark Shark Shark. And uh, I just prefer to look at it that way. Probably uh, many purists do as well, so that's a little tip for you. And uh, I actually have heard that, um, well, the games are pretty much identical, right? But um, the Same 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 Japanese region is uh, slightly more difficult than uh, the uh, Fire Shark uh, Western uh, kind of release of the game. So uh, just one thing to keep in mind, I suppose. And, um, you know, it's um, been modified. All of these, like I said, there were uh, originally vertically scrolling uh, shoot 'em ups for Tate arcade monitors. So, obviously, when ported over to the Meg Drive, they kind of had to reprogram them to be displayed in, uh, on a Yoko monitor like this. So, you do have this bar here. But they have altered the game, the uh, placement of the enemies, um, kind of how they appear and how quickly they rush in uh, onto you to 
uh, sort of compensate for that. So it's actually a uh, very, very good for it the way they've done this one. And uh, all three of these really. So uh, fantastic stuff there. I'm just going to uh, turn this one off and plug in the uh, next game on the list, uh, V5 Grindstormer. So I'll be right back. All right, so uh, now you're looking at, wow, uh, just a really beyond thrilled to own this one, uh, V5 Grindstormer, a fantastic 1993 uh, Toa Plan release, and um, actually I think that's when the arcade board came out, so it was ported around the same time. Could be mistaken, I'll have to go back and check later, but uh, another uh, vertical shmup for a Tate monitor uh, was reprogrammed to be displayed um, on a, a Yoko monitor like this with the bar. And, um, yeah, an absolutely fantastic port, man. I mean, I, some people give it a little bit of gripe because it's not arcade perfect, but what do you want? I mean, this is the, the Genesis Mega Drive. What were you expecting? Um, yeah, it's not 100% perfect, but it is uh, spot-on identical in pretty much every way other than the aspect ratio and the fact that the sound and graphics have been... Um, you know, kind of slightly downgraded just due to the 16-bit uh, hardware limitations of the Mega Drive. But other than that, it's a kick-ass port. I mean, honestly, I don't think the Super Nintendo would have been able to handle this. I mean, different type of hardware, they did different things better, and um, I couldn't be more, wow, really impressed with this port on the uh, Mega Drive. Now, um, obviously, it would have been probably perfect or near perfect on the Saturn, and uh, we kind of, this was 93, so kind of just missed perhaps getting a port of this to that system, which would have been awesome. But um, can't complain about this one, really love it, and uh, quite a rare one. Um, you know, Fire Shark here, and this is a uh, Daisenpu Twin Hawk, I'll get to that. A little bit more common, um, but uh, the Mega Drive releases are, uh, they're awesome with the cover art, so in good condition. I suppose maybe they could run a little bit more than the Western releases. But uh, V5 here, uh, Grindstormer, uh, it's a pretty rare one, pretty difficult one to track down, and definitely the most expensive of the lot here. Uh, it's going to run you probably, you know, anywhere from uh, 70 to 100 bucks in that range, but it's well worth it. Um, only port of this fantastic arcade game, uh, Toaplan Genius again, like most of their shmups. Um, I really love it. Uh, got only positive things to say about it. And uh, you don't have to do any kind of region swapping here. Uh, codes on the Game Genie, kind of an interesting thing. Um, now, Grindstormer and V5, they're slightly different games in terms of the power-up weapon system. Uh, Grindstormer, the uh, US-European release, a little bit more basic. Um, and then V5, the Japanese region, allows you to kind of swap between different power-ups and weapons. And, um, well, here's just the, uh, here's Grindstormer. It's not quite what I meant to do. <laughs> Let's reset that real quickly. Been a little while since I fired it up. Let's see, how do we do this? Okay, there we go. So, yeah, um, you can access this uh, options menu here. And uh, game type, difficulty, control type, yada, 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 lives, credit limit, etc., etc. So we can switch over to uh, V5 right there. And, I mean, how awesome is that? Both, um, all region data stored on one cart here um, that you can actually swap between. They gave you the option to do that here. Whereas many times you'd have to use a Game Genie to access the different region data stored on a Mega Drive cart. So uh, pretty awesome to be able to play the original uh, V5 version. And that's pretty, that's a beautiful logo. Even composite, look at those uh, freaking awesome scan lines there, great color. But yeah, so uh, we do that and we've got V5. Uh, and you know, like I said, for this one, uh, it's quite different. You know, the weapon power-up system, you can swap between them with uh, V5 as opposed to uh, Grindstormer where um, you just kind of pick up whatever you pick up and that's what you have. Uh, I kind of prefer the V5 uh, weapon power-up speed uh, of all this over here that you can see. So yeah, quite a uh, expensive arcade board. One I'd like to own too, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, this is a little bit pricey, the Mega Drive port, but only system it was ported to, and a uh, kick-ass one, an awesome one. I uh, can't recommend it highly enough. 
Okay, and finally we have, uh, as you can see, Twin Hawk. Uh, or uh, Daisenpu in Japan. And uh, much like um, uh, Fire Shark, Same, 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 this is a, another one of those games where, uh, regardless of the region of the game, you know, whatever region the system you're playing it on, it's going to boot to that region. So, although this is a Japanese Mega Drive cart, as you can see, um, it's playing in the uh, US region, being that I'm playing it on a US Sega Genesis. And there is actually a code for this one as well, I believe, to play it in uh, Daisenpu mode. I'm not sure of the differences if they're, I'm sure they're not too stark, but you will get probably a cooler uh, Toplan logo. This is a really cool one too, uh, like I said, um, another uh, vertically scrolling shoot 'em up for a Tate monitor in arcades, uh, ported over to the Mega Drive and reprogrammed to fit on uh, a different uh, aspect ratio here with a Yoko monitor, but uh, they kind of, you know, change things around in terms of where the enemies appear, uh, coming from the sides, the different speeds of them, and uh, programmed it quite well. It's a, it's a really good port and a very interesting game, and this one, uh, you're obviously controlling uh, a plane there, and uh, kind of the different thing about Daisenpu or uh, Twin Hawk is that uh, all of the enemies that you will encounter in this game are on the ground. Tanks, different enemies like that. There are, are no planes, so you're a plane fighting, you know, flying in from the air, fighting against all these ground units, which is uh, pretty cool, I think. And, um, uh, you know, very true to the arcade board as much as possible with the uh, intro and um, music, everything like that. So another fantastic, really impressive port for uh, the Mega Drive. So many great shooters on this system, just uh, especially Toplan, man. I mean, if you love that company and uh, you don't have a way to play the arcade boards or don't want to spend the really, really exorbitant high amount of money that a lot of them command, um, it's a great option here, you know. The Mega Drive, just a great system, just, uh, you know, blows the doors off the SNES, Super Famicom, uh, for the most part, in terms of the variety of different uh, shmups for the system. Especially, like I said, if you love Toaplan. Uh, these are great ports, and you can't go wrong with uh, these, uh, well, the Mega Drive and the ports of them to this system. Just really want to, I guess, quickly show you what I'm working on here with my... Uh, little main setup. As you can see I've got uh, Gan Hoki or um, Mystic Riders, the western title of it, running in uh, MAME OS X and um, yeah wow just absolutely beautiful with the scanline filters applied on a high quality uh, Dell Trinitron like this one just fantastic RGB quality stuff <laughs> can't uh, get enough of uh, these uh, monitors whether you're running MAME or uh, XRGB units, uh, upscaling stuff, line doubling it. Just looks fantastic. Check it out. And I really, you know, being that I'm using MAME OS X, there's no like switch res option that um, kind of, I guess the Windows um, MAME emulators have a little bit better options with those. But I mean, I don't have a working uh, Windows PC right now, so you're using what you can, right? I've got. Uh, a Mac Mini, an old one hooked up to this. I've also got an XRGB with uh, XRGB2 with a PS. This thing has two VGA inputs on it, so it can have a lot of stuff running on it. But uh, yeah, being that uh, there's no switch res that I know of, if there is something like that, so you can get it to kind of line double perfectly for Mac OS X, uh, MAME OS X on the Mac, rather, let me know. But um, yeah, mostly just downloaded vertical and horizontal shooters that are um, in 320, exactly 320 by 240 resolution. So I can kind of set my Mac Mini to 640 by 480, 60 hertz, and exactly have everything line doubled. So uh, the resolution is perfect, and you don't get any kind of scrolling weird artifacts. Like with a lot of the Capcom and Konami games that were in kind of arcade games um, that were in non-standard resolution, if you don't have any kind of switch res program, uh, MAME OS X that I know of doesn't do anything like that. Uh, you know, there's no groovy MAME for this or anything like that that you can get with Windows. So uh, I'm honestly kind of limited to uh, 320 by 240 games, but basically that's every Irem game, every Toplan game uh, that works in MAME OS X. So can't complain about that. Pretty stoked with it. You know, I'm thinking about maybe getting a 31 kilohertz uh, TriSync arcade cab. So I can kind of use a JPEG to hook up this to that and uh, 
maybe Tate that monitor so it can play a lot of the really expensive rising and um, uh, cave. Actually, uh, a lot of the old cave shmups, uh, the rising ones, Irem ones, a lot of games like that were all 320 by 240 so with MAME OS X they look uh, really fantastic. And, um, but yeah, if anyone knows of some kind of resolution switching program to kind of, I don't know, smooth out, maybe eliminate those artifacts when you're trying to emulate non-standard uh, games on MAME for a Mac, I'd be interested to uh, hear about that. But yeah, you know, so here's, I don't, I'm not using a front end or anything, might get around to doing that, but I uh, don't really care uh, too much about it, you know. I've just got some, I've been working on getting some of the Flyers arcade art over here when you click on it, just uh, in the menu, which is really cool, I like that. Here's a Mystic Riders. Working on kind of getting all of these <laughs> updated with different Flyers, and you know, when I want to play the uh, vertical games, I just, uh, Quickly rotate this 20-inch uh, Dell Trinitron. Uh, just a magnificent picture. Let's go to uh, Dan Gun Fever on or Fever SOS in the West. Just <laughs> this is, man, maybe one of the best cave games of all time. Uh, if you haven't checked this one out, it's a very expensive PCB to pick up, so uh, main uh, place flawlessly there, a good option for it, and uh, check out the beautiful scanline filters. But yeah, just love this game. So yeah, having a lot of fun with uh, MAME lately, just kind of configuring everything, uh, getting this stuff to look arcade perfect on a 31 kilohertz monitor. I mean, just check out that picture, dude. It just wow, it blows the mind. Uh, arcade uh, RGB monitor quality stuff. Uh, VGA, of course, uh, basically is RGB, uh, same quality. Okay, what's going on everybody, and um, yeah, some more PCB pickups to show you today, and um, yeah, you are looking at, uh, for me, just one that I've always loved, a uh, fantastic vertically scrolling shoot 'em up and this one is Super Space Fortress Macross, I'll let you get some uh, scanline goodness on the Sony PVM 1954Q in Tate position. And I uh, just fired it up and played it. Uh, <laughs> noticed that I had dip switches, um, the two up that have it on like most difficult, hardest level. I still managed to get over a million, so uh, pretty good for the first play in a long time. But, I mean, just wow, just check out the game. It's an absolutely beautiful one. Um, you know, honestly, this is one that um, uh, a ton of shoot 'em up fans enjoy, and then, um, you know, there's a fair amount that aren't so keen on it either. But uh, for me, I, I've always loved this. This was one that I played back in arcades back in the day. I mean, just check out the art in it. It's uh, based upon, obviously, the uh, Macross uh, Do You Remember Love. Uh, just uh, quite an epic, uh, famous animated film. And um, yeah, I just love the little cutscenes in there. Just fantastic stuff. And visually, wow, I mean, super detailed, uh, incredibly bright, vivid stuff. Uh, check out the detailed animation uh, in the explosions there. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. But yeah, I mean, just fantastic. Just check it out. So I I'm just, wow, I'm just super thrilled to uh, have finally kind of acquired this one to, um, yeah, put in the shoot 'em up collection. And I mean, it just, wow, it just looks fantastic beyond uh, what words can say on this PVM. just love all the uh, the demo attract sequences for this game just fantastic I mean it's just awesome 
and it's so much fun to play as well. Uh, like I said, obviously check it out. Um, wow, just looks unbelievably nice. Just really stellar stuff uh, considering the fact that it was made in 1992. I mean, just check out the detail and all these bright, vivid flashes of light, these explosions, lasers, rockets, everything going all over the place with this a highly detailed cityscape beneath you that you're flying above. I mean, it just kicks ass and then some. It's amazing. I love it. You can see the uh, band Presto there. And I mean, actually, another interesting convoluted situation with uh, how this thing was created and marketed. So, uh, yeah, the great uh, NMK, who uh, I love, um, they actually developed this game. They were responsible for that. Um, and then uh, band Presto uh, published this one uh, in Japan. And then over here in uh, North America, in the U.S. and Canada... It was uh, licensed by and um, distributed by uh, Fabtech, I believe. So, uh, licensed to rather and distributed by Fabtech. I mean, yeah, just chat. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> it's just it's just a thrilling demo just to watch. So, I mean, when you're actually playing the game, it's just it's absolutely fantastic. Love it. And you see the title, uh, Super Space Fortress Macross. Um, Another cool thing about this PCB is, and I always love PCBs like this that are kind of almost like multi-regional. So uh, I believe it's um, Dip Switch. Uh, what is it? It's Dip Switch Five on the board, I believe. And here's the uh, here's the actual board, by the way. If my camera is going to focus, which you probably won't, <laughs> but um, let's see the uh, NMK on there. You know what? Fuck this. I should actually flip on the lights here. And they're kind of slow to turn on. <laughs> Fluorescent bulbs. But, uh, yeah, maybe my camera will focus a bit better on the actual PCB with some uh, more proper light on the situation. And then again, it might not. You never know with this thing. Ooh, focus, focus. But yeah, anyway, you can, you can see that Ben Presto 1992. NMK. There's a little uh, Fabtech kind of uh, serial number on there. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to focus on that or not. But yeah, I mean, wow, what can I say? Like, I've just, uh, I've said numerous times, myriad times already in this video. Uh, absolutely thrilled to have finally acquired this one in my uh, possession. Uh, yeah, I've been kind of you know, picking up quite a few vertically oriented shoot 'em ups lately, vertically scrolling shoot 'em ups. Uh, since I do have this, uh, you know, since I've decided to kind of set up my Pana Twin Long with this unbelievably nice 19 inch uh, Sony PVM 1954Q in Tate position. And uh, yeah, I just, just uh, absolutely love this little uh, vertical shooter setup that I've got right here. And then, you know, um, just to the right of it, I have the uh, the big 27-inch Trinitron um, with the Saturn hooked up via S-Video and the PS2 uh, via component on there. So just uh, with that and this, just uh, really shmup ecstasy, shmup heaven in here. And this thing produces a, a just a tremendously stellar picture for, um, you know, just a... Uh, you know, this is a PVM. This is just a regular kind of consumer grade... Um, television so obviously this is going to have a much better picture you can do rgb with it but i mean when you check out the s video and the component on this uh, 27 inch trinitron it's honestly comparable if not uh maybe it's uh i don't want to say it's not quite as good but it's like 90 percent as good anyway i mean this is a better picture but what am I trying to say? This is, uh, it's nearly just as good. And with the larger size, I mean, that's a benefit with that as well. But you just, uh, I, the music is fantastic as well. Really great, uh, quite fitting for the flow of the game.
And, uh, you know, you could probably <laughs> obviously tell just by the way I'm sort of gushing about it, but uh, it is one that I have wanted for quite some time. Uh, you know, um, the, the first vertical PCB that I bought back uh, two, three years ago, well, yeah, I guess three years ago now, wow, was uh, Stormblade by Visco, one of my favorites. And, um, you know, I had this thing uh, in Tate mode for a little bit of time, but uh, then kind of decided to move it back because I had just like, you know, 30, 40 or more a horizontal PCB, so I thought, yeah, no point in just having this thing set up for one. But now that I've got it kind of set back up, uh, been uh, really getting back into, you know, I've always loved uh, picking up the uh, vertical shmups for the Saturn PS1 and PS2 for uh, the Tate monitor over here, but um, just pretty awesome now to kind of actually for the first time really feel like, okay, I can go out and, uh, you know, drop some cash on these uh, vertical PCBs because they are just uh, really fantastic, awesome to own in the collection, so much fun to play. Okay, so here is the other vertical shmup PCB that uh, I had mentioned I would talk about uh, that I picked up relatively recently. And uh, I kind of already went into some detail and depth in terms of the history and origins of this one. It's quite a massive board, by the way, uh, as many of the 80s PCBs were, if you just take a look at this uh, hulking thing here. But, um... Yeah, uh, just uh, a fantastic one. Uh, quite a uh, legendary shoot 'em up. This one is Sky Shark. Uh, a great early effort by Toaplan. Uh, quite an influential game, really. Uh, came out in 1987. And uh, visually, especially for that time period, uh, just an incredibly impressive effort. But yeah, this one's kind of uh, one of those uh, joint efforts to kind of bring this uh, PCB, this arcade game, to fruition. Sort of has a, quite a convoluted history in terms of how it was produced and distributed, etc., uh, etc. Et so, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously developed by the uh, absolutely beyond legendary Toa Plan, uh, one of the best, if not the best, creators of uh, shmups in the history of the genre. Uh, then it was actually... Uh, published in Japan by uh, Taito, as you can see there, and uh, finally uh, licensed to Romstar for distribution in the United States. So, like I said, yeah, uh, sort of a cryptic and convoluted history, as uh, many of these kind of joint effort PCB projects were back in the day, but uh, the end result is uh, just uh, absolute Toaplan gold. And uh, like I said, um, quite an influential shoot 'em up for uh, many different games to come. laid some groundwork for uh, many of Toaplan's games afterwards, uh, definitely Fire Shark, which uh, came after this one in uh, about, what, two years later, I think, uh, 1989, which uh, generally people do, I don't know, kind of regard as the uh, more complete, just the uh, better overall well-rounded title in the series, and I can't, I can't really necessarily disagree with that, but uh, I don't know. Maybe for slightly more nostalgic purposes, I kind of actually prefer this one, uh, I, I might have to say. And uh, without this one, we definitely wouldn't have had that one, that's for sure. So, uh, yeah, quite an influential game. And just, I mean, especially for the time period, considering the time in which this game was uh, developed and released, uh, man, I mean, uh, just uh, very, very impressive visually. Uh, great colors to it. Um, really an immense amount of detail in the sprite work. The uh, different um, enemy tanks, planes, ships, uh, your biplane flying around, as well as... The, uh, the different backgrounds, all of the uh, different uh, trees in this sort of lush jungle environment that you kind of fly over, the water, these bridges here, uh, the different little huts, all kinds of little things that you can pick out. 
uh, just the detail on the, the kind of roofs of these buildings right here. Uh, like I said, especially for 1987, uh, many of you, I mean, if you're old enough to remember it, uh, this was, uh, wow, especially back then, uh, absolutely blew my mind. And uh, I'm sure many of you would concur with that who played it back then. And I mean, uh, it's just awesome kind of... I don't know, bringing that history back to life on this uh, Sony PVM 1954Q. Uh, just a fantastic RGB picture with this uh, Pana Twin Long hooked up to it via RGB.